Hello. Morning, Tim. Hey. Um, Hi, Tim. Back to Skype meetings. <laughs> can you hear me? Yes. It's yes, okay. Hi, Thomas. Hi, Alex. Is it Tim, can you hear me? Good morning there for you, Kurt. What's that? What's the time? Is it six o'clock in the morning? You got it right. Yeah, thanks oh, for sure. bumping it up an hour. <laughs> it's a pleasure. I think we could have even. Uh, I think there was another meeting in the way. Otherwise, we could have done another hour later. But I think we wanted to have uh, Niall joining us from Australia. So that's why we stuck it to this. Hour. Mm -hmm. Guys, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. Hi, Alex. Both are Alex. We can hear you, but we can't see you. <laughs> You're, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I think that uh, several people will join uh, this meeting here in this uh, separate room. Let okay. me see if people is coming. Kurt's still in his pajamas, Shane. <laughs> If, you, if you're awake enough, Kurt, it would be great if you can help me uh, uh, present the session because uh, you're just as up to speed as things as I am. And, uh, yeah, I'll do the best I can. Um, yeah, I know me and Niall have a pretty narrow window of time compatibility. Yeah. <laughs> so, the pain. They should have made designed Earth as a long, flat strip instead of this big ball and then... Uh, I try to, while we're waiting for the other guys, um, Kurt, I, I try to send a mail to the US um, user group list. But I, my mails always get bounced because I think the, oh, okay. the size limit is very small. But there is an invitation from Noah and uh, I forget who the other organization was to us or to QGIS to discuss uh, to a discussion about your coordinate transforms and datum, the NAD datum and things. and um, I, see, I, I try to forward it to you guys so you could find somebody amongst yourselves if you're interested in going to see what it's about. But um, okay, maybe um, it involves traveling somewhere. Yeah, you, maybe you could just forward that directly to my email. Yeah, let me, let me start to get out again. If you want to do questions, we have this Wi-Fi microphone. Yeah, that would be great if you can pass the mic around. David, this is the microphone. <laughs> nice, nice. UGS one. Wonderful, wonderful. It's been really nice participating from uh, being able to participate from far away. Yeah. Yeah, this works quite well. I need to get uh, a website up, I guess. Is it Niall coming? Um, he was Joining. supposed to. Maybe, let me try to ping him on the um, Google thing. Let me see. If he's not, then the code can send him a grumpy letter saying, "Why did you? Why did I get up at 6? <laughs> uh, he's he's replying on my um, uh, on my Zoom chat. Niall never sleeps. <laughs> he never sleeps. Just copying the link. Hey, by the way, Tim, there, um, when I try to approve people right this morning, I'm getting a, a 500 error. I'm not allowed to approve organizations. I was going to approve 
Weems program. And Let me just check that you're uh, in, the, in the right club. <laughs> okay. I've got Etienne sitting on the, sit in the background ready to, uh, to fix any issues that happen. So maybe you just can quickly file a ticket for him. And, um, um, so I'm going to share my screen here with you. And now with you. Um, Uh, yeah, you're in the manager group. Um, okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. Glad to join in this conference. Welcome. Just sending Hello. my regards, and I'm going to mute myself again. Okay, sure. Hi, Andre. Um, okay, I think, are we ready to start? We, still, Niles, last, Niles, Niles yeah. told me that he's wrecked, and I don't think he's, I'm going to be any value in um, quoting from him now. So uh, I guess he's been really pushing it hard for the release stuff. So um, I think we all started out. Um, Um, are we waiting for anybody there in the room, um, uh, Giovanni? Uh, yeah. Can you hear me, Tim? Yes, I can. Yes, I can. Tim? Yes, I can hear you. Uh, yeah, here in the room we are ready. Okay, okay. So I think we, we can start. I will start to record. Uh, I need to just quickly... Uh, okay, it's actually already recording, so that's fine. Um, right, so um, the purpose of the session is to show you what we are working on with the certification system. Um, Perhaps I can just ask you, yeah, just interrupt me if you want to know something. Uh, it's not a formal presentation. It's just going to be a show and tell and try to also explain some of our thinking about why we built it like we built it. And um, you, you can surely give ideas or suggestions or uh, ask any questions as we go. Um, I saw, I saw Kurt while your error was coming up there, so we'll go and fix that in a second. So, um, so the certification. Uh, first, I should start just with a bit of history in that we, I think, first discussed certification in Wroclaw in, what year was Wroclaw? Maybe five years ago or something like that, five or six years ago. Um, and we had a really difficult time to come up with any system that would kind of tick everybody's boxes. So some of the considerations were um, people wanted to have like an online testing system. So you could like um, give a student some uh, like an online exam and they would fill some, answer some questions and then get a digital certificate produced based on the, on the results of the exam. Some of the some other interested parties wanted more like of a portfolio-based approach, like especially in the academic community. They tend to say the students must produce um, a few projects through the year and they submit them and they're marked subjectively rather than objectively, like from a, from a score sheet or something like this. Um, we wanted, uh, we had people that were like interested in um, having different levels of uh, professional status as a QGIS practitioner. Um, for example, uh, you could be a GIS technician with QGIS, you could be, um, do a one-day course, or, a, or you could do a developer course, or a trainer's course. And so there's all these different 
um, like a matrix of different things that you could possibly get out of a certification scheme. And it was actually very difficult to come up with anything that will meet everybody's requirements. So we really just took a step back and said, well, I mean, how, how does the community operate? We're already working on a web of trust and um, uh, we, like, we kind of know who the people are in the community and um, we should trust, like if, for example, Kurt or Giovanni is giving a training course, that they're giving a good quality of course and um, maybe not be too rigid in a framework that we come up with and rather say that, um, uh, rather provide a mechanism for somebody like Giovanni to run a training course and give an official QGIS certificate that we can trace the certificate and say, um, this person attended the course by Giovanni, um, we can prove it, he has a certificate and he gets the unique like identifier um, as a result of that course. Um, and so, something else that we wanted to get out of the system were, was a way to generate some money for QGIS. So um, we came up with a completely arbitrary number of 20 euros for um, certificates. Some people wanted it to be more expensive. Some people like myself want it to be more cheap because in Africa it's like 20 euros is a lot of money. And, and other places maybe people don't care about 20 euros so much. But um, so, um, so we had all these different considerations and we tried to basically build a system which is really based on pure um, approval. So uh, Marco just joined the room. Maybe we know he's, he's a good trainer and we, he, um, he kind of says, I wanted to run training courses. So he just talks to Kurt or myself. Um, we're at the and uh, there's Hans van der Post as well. We're at the moment the moderators. Um, and he says, "I want to run training. You guys know me. You know we know what we're doing." And we say, "Yeah, sure. Um, uh, you can you can become a certifying organization." Um, it gets a bit more complicated when we don't know the person and they're outside of our web of trust. So um, to deal with those kind of situations, we try to build in a kind of system where Kurt is acting as our uh, moderator would make some first contact with the person making the application. So let's say, for example, we had somebody from, uh, well, let me not give any specific examples. If you had somebody from a, a place we don't know, we don't know the organization, and they say, we're running QGIS courses, uh, and we want to also issue certificates. Um, we are a bit wary of just having like um, some arbitrary certificate given without knowing that there's this basic quality level associated with those. So um, we, um, we kind of have a system where we would write to them and ask them, can you please send some uh, examples of your training materials, some the show us the curriculum you have. Um, and this is still much in development. Kurt, maybe you can speak a bit on your thoughts um, in this area. Um, yeah, it's kind of a difficult call. Um, in fact, there's the, the, for the first time, I just asked someone if they could provide me some training materials and they don't have any yet. And uh, so I think I'm going to have to, you know, not approve them in that case. Yeah. Um, but, but I do some checks to try to see if they, maybe they're an, an OSGEO charter member or um, are part of a QGIS national user group or something like that, that at least if I don't know them, um, shows that they're involved in the community in some way. Yeah. So again, uh, if, if there are suggestions from those in the in the room here um, of how we could do that in a streamlined way, I mean, that would be great. Um, I think in the longer run, like in the future, we kind of had in mind that we would say to the organization, well, you must pay for one of our evaluators to come and uh, fly to your place your country and sit in on one of your courses and watch your trainers train and I mean we could take it to this kind of level later but it requires obviously that the person who's been flown in is you know covered their costs and their time and prepared to do it and uh, yeah it's not something I don't I don't think we're set up to do that at the moment unless somebody wants to volunteer to be the globe wandering <laughs> QGIS certification uh, uh, Approve. I don't know, Kurt, maybe that's something you had in mind for yourself. <laughs> it's not what I had in mind for myself. <laughs> I can say that for sure. But, um, yeah. um, 
So um, let me show you basically what, what we built and, um, and then you can kind of see how the process works. So you, you can see this, this website, um, hopefully you can see it on your screen now, and uh, this website is the QGIS uh, kind of project on this platform we've been building which covers the, the change logs and the sponsorship management and a whole bunch of other things. And I won't try to cover all the other things that it does now, but um, one of the features is the certification uh, system. Um, and you can find this at change, changelog.qgis.org. Um, uh, we'll, we'll, uh, Richard says you must give it a better name. I think he's right. We'll probably come up with a maybe uh, different name because it's now doing more than just a changelog. Um, um, this is where I'm hoping the site is not crashed because it's taken a really long time to load. Oh. I think maybe I'm, I've just got the staging site here. I'm just going to jump over to the staging site and uh, have a look and see what's going on there just now. Um, so, um, So basically what we have now is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven organizations that have already registered with us. Um, and if you want to register your organization, you have a little button here you can just press and um, it will ask you a bunch of questions. Um, sorry, my internet is really slow right now. That's going on. Tim. Yeah. Sorry, Tim, I was trying to, to register at the University of Copenhagen this morning and there were some error messages, so I have now two pending, ah. uh, so there, there might be a problem on the pages. So, there is a, yeah. Kirk mentioned as well, there is some bug that we will fix just now. Um, I've just seen the, uh, we're getting the error messages coming in here, so we can go and see what's causing it. Uh, okay. Uh, everything was going wrong at the wrong time. Um, it's normal, you're on a live thing. Yeah. Then it gives Kurtz a chance to wake up. Uh, it's <laughs> a six o'clock in the morning over there. Uh -huh. <laughs> yep. Uh, maybe Etienne is busy deploying some updates or something. <laughs> and. Uh, I'm just going to press refresh a few times and hopefully the problem magically goes away. Otherwise, uh, I will resort to... Um, Tim, one, one question. I'm a little confused. What is the uh, official URL for this platform? Uh, it's at changelog.qgis.org. Uh, uh, I've already shared the link uh, through the chat yeah. asking for questions. So you should, you should find it li like this. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to bring up, uh, while, while I'm trying to figure out why the website is not running, which was running fine a few minutes ago, um, I'm just going to see if I can, I've actually got some slides that uh, uh, I can show. Um, just give me one moment, maybe you can ask Kurt. A question that takes two minutes to answer when I think you find this slide. I, I wanted to, to do a question. Uh, maybe instead of visiting the trainers uh, locally, maybe they could just save a session, a training session, and share the video. And that would give an idea of uh, if the, the train, trainer is good or not. But also there is one concern because we are we are certificating uh, institutions, right? We are not uh, certificating the uh, instructors, so we are kind of passing that that role to the organization, right? Yeah, and that was a conscious choice yeah, we made because yeah. um, it allows us to work one level yeah, up in the abstraction layer. Of, um, <coughs> Yes. The, the certificate does say which organization was running the course and who was the teacher. 
So the the if this the organization is not well, um, probably they don't have well they don't have good teachers and. Uh, that's a that's an issue, obviously. But um, if at least you know that you have one. Uh, and do we have a do we have a, a mechanism to keep watching the organization? So, for instance, if uh, something like the um, the people that gets the certificate get a way to uh, evaluate the the training that they get. So that if we get too many bad uh, reviews on the organization, maybe we could kind of review the, their status or something like that. I'm worried about uh, organizations getting their certificates and then, well, they, they will pay our certificates, but they might be doing a bad job. Yeah, I think one thing we could do is actually have like a review page on the, um, on the website itself for the attendees that they can come and rate the training organization and if they're getting a lot of bad reviews we could go and look at them but um so we could we could build something like that i guess um, uh, in terms of training yeah i mean marco I, I hear what you're saying about the trainer like you could go and evaluate with one trainer and then it could be a different trainer the next day who's not very good um, it's uh, and the only way I think we could do that is that we certify trainers and we say uh, again like, okay, you can be a certifying organization and you need to have certified trainers and the trainer need to be approved by one of one of the, the community. Um, but we like we need help for how to set up a mechanism for that. Um, does the person um, need to send a video recording of their course or? Um, if it's a three-day course, it's kind of like uh, maybe difficult to sit and watch a three-day video or something like that. Um, um, so, um, I don't know if you have some suggestions how we could manage that. We're anyway trying to build it incrementally. So yeah, there's lots of concerns and uh, oh, everything is... Uh, I think we have a pretty large community. So the, the chance that somebody that we know in the community would know somebody that is trying to apply as a certification agency is rather large. Yeah. So maybe, you know, like, as you say, web of trust. So if somebody that we know knows them, we can ask him what what experience they had with them, uh, or if they are maybe they are super well known in in a country we don't uh, we directly don't follow, but we have somebody that follows them. So I think that we at the beginning probably will be more having people that we know, mm -hmm. and so maybe not encountering the problem as quickly. Yeah, and, and we are definitely trying to start with a small closed group, or not closed group, but a smaller group, and then build it out as we go on top. So uh, Kurt has been great, and, and Hans and a couple of other guys have been great, just and you, Mark, as well, just you know, trying it out and giving your ideas and things like that. And we start with a simple concept and then build it out. Um, uh, I'm running on my... Local I think the, one of the strengths at the moment is that we do have such a diverse community and there's a lot of diversity in the types of courses that might be taught. You know, it might be a semester long college course or it might be a, a one day workshop for professionals. And this system currently works for all of that because the if you're an approved organization, the particular course you're teaching um, is is the, the student is basically certified for completing that particular training, whether it was weeks long or day long. And people can then look up the certificate to see that that person is in fact you know, passed that class or took that course and, and 
is approved with that certificate. So this, the certificate is simply saying that a student took a course from a certified organization approved by the QGIS community and passed that. So it works for a variety of circumstances. So I think it's been a good place to start. Yeah. Um, I totally agree on that. I totally agree on that point because it gives us the possibility. We have two days courses. We have nine week courses, and people look up the curriculum if they want to see what people have been doing. We we don't uh, we don't tie us up into special uh, courses. I think this, this is good for the, for now. Yeah. So um, I think there's lots of things we can do. To One of them should be maybe like when you run a course, you should attach the um, the course curriculum to the course uh, to the you know, to the course instance or something like that. Um, um, or even to say, like, if we want to keep things very open, we make people attach their training materials to the course or something like that, so we can actually go and see um, what happened in the course. Um, but, um, yeah. So, um, I have it running on my dev machine here, and, and my guys are really fixing it seriously in the background of my live crash on the live server. Um, we've written quite an extensive help um document here which tries to explain um the whole process so really want to if you if you're interested in getting up to speed with the certification a lot of what i've been explaining here now is already in this document and you maybe want to just check it so the way that you find that help is like uh when you go to register a new a new organization there's a there's a help <coughs> and uh um we kind of uh have a have a workflow where the user will log into projector, which is the, the project that hosts the QGIS change logs. And uh, you choose a project like QGIS, then you uh, create an organization. Then you wait for the organization to be approved. Um, and then uh, within that, you create a training, one or more training centers. So your organization, uh, Mark, Marco might be training in. Uh, in Geneva and in Zurich, or something like that, um, as two different training centers. Um, and then uh, you you um, can create courses, and the course basically just says, like, QGIS Advanced, QGIS Intermediate. You can call the course anything you like. Um, and you can also say how many instruction hours are associated with that course. So, like, again, as examples, it's nothing but a nine week course. Which has like uh, 40 hours of face time across that nine weeks, and so there's 40 hours of instruction. Um, and then, uh, um, you can then create an instance of the course and run it, and basically assign users to that course. Um, you can do that with a batch upload of a CSV file or just by typing in their names and their email addresses. And then, when, when you finish the course, you can issue certificates to the the course attendees and the certificates uh, comes out like in a you can customize it with your own branding behind it but it puts the QGIS logos at the moment my signature or whatever the next year signature will be with go on there um, and then it puts the instructor signature if you want to um, so you put the digital you can upload it with the signature um, and then within a within the project of QGIS you can have um, Managers that are people who are um, certified to give um, the instruction. So I'm just going to mute you, Marco. I think you can some from the background. Um, so I'll, I'll try to show you the workflow here, and hopefully it won't crash again on us while we're doing it. Um, so uh, basically, uh, the project manager, so myself, um, we'll see who's the project manager now. There's a bunch of us that can manage the QGIS project instance. You can come onto the platform here. Um, um, and um, they can go, come to the certification managers here and assign any users from the platform to be certification managers. And again, um, we've been working in a sort of side group um, and the people that have been stepping forward to help are on this list, but if you want to be involved, 
I think people just speak to, to Kirk and myself, and I think it's no problem to add more people here. So we do need to just make sure that the, the workflows are clear for, for like who's going to first contact a new organization if they're making an application. Um, so you assign some people here to the, to the organization as certification managers. And when you're a certification manager, then you can come to, uh, you'll be able to come and see which organizations are um, waiting for approval. And um, then those, those organizations, you can come and look at their, um, their details here. Uh, like who it is, there's contact details for the person and so on. And uh, the idea would be that Kurt would, for example, write to the person and say, oh, so you want to become a, a certifying organization, you can just point me to your website or ask whatever the questions that you have. Once you've uh, approved it, once you're happy with them, uh, the certify, the, the, they come and click on this thumbs up and that basically adds them to the of certifying organizations. But you can find, like any normal user could come here and find that list. Um, and then the idea is that you, um, the person who made the application is the owner of that organization. And so I'll just edit Kurt's down there, show you on mine. <laughs> and then um, he, can, he can then assign it in his organization, um, like uh, of course, uh, uh, owners of that uh, organization. So you can say, like he's got three guys he's working with and they should all be able to define new courses, um, uh, add attendees to a course, and certificates, and so on. Um, and um, the, we, we asked a whole bunch of information about the organization, a lot of which is not used yet, but we had some ideas. For example, we asked where does your what country is your organization based in, which, what is the location of the training centers. But the idea that in the future we'd like to have a dashboard where somebody looking for training courses we come and see spatially and temporally where can they find a training course for Kibis. And uh, maybe you could also put some filter based on the kind of courses that are being offered. Um, so we didn't build that yet, but we built enough like uh, data capture that we could record that kind of thing. Um, so once the organization has been approved, um, uh, just go back to um, if I go into, into the organization itself, um, you'll see like a dashboard. So this would be the organization manager's view of the, of the site. And uh, on this dashboard, um, you can see how many credits you have. So the way that we're doing the e-commerce at the moment is completely manual. It's another thing that we want to fix and we would like some ideas on. Um, so basically, we just give a person credits and then um, as they use up the credits, it's working on an honor system at the moment. They just say, I've used the 40 credits. 40 times 20 is 80, 800 um, euros, and they'll, they'll ask Andreas to please give them an invoice for 800 euros, and they send the money to do this project. And that's working well for now, but I mean, it's not gonna scale very well if we have, I don't know, hundreds of certifying organizations. So um, we want to put an e-commerce system in. I've looked at Stripe and PayPal. Um, they both have some issues because um, um, the Stripe, well, PayPal, Andreas is very unhappy with PayPal because they charge a lot of money and they, they, don't, let, they don't let us work in uh, Swiss francs. They work in German or in euros. And then there is some like, as well as the normal uh, PayPal fee for uh, the transaction fee, I think it's 2% or something. They also charge then a, like a conversion fee. So by the time we paid all these fees, it's almost coming to 10% of every uh, transaction or something like this. Andreas can give better details on this, but um, it's not a great setup. And with um, Stripe, the reason I would like to use Stripe is because we're actually building a platform that we want to make available to other OSGO projects who want to use the similar infrastructure to run their certification programs and so on. And that's quite nice because it can like let you like just have one payment platform and then it just sends the money to each project. Um, but um, we need to um, like have a, a central bank account that everything goes through and it's uh, like not clear for me how we would work it um, with the idea of having more organizations using the system. 
Um, somebody suggested to use Bitcoin or something. I don't know. Like, if you if somebody's got a good idea of how we can manage the e-commerce part, uh, we're open to suggestions. But uh, just bearing in mind that we want to also make the same platform available to other projects as well. So. Um, um, if you catch Andreas once, once he's recovered from his cold and ask him like um, uh, more details about the financial side, we can put it in that. Um, so you can see this organization is Kurt's uh, company and he's got one training center. Um, is it correct that you've had zero attendees? Is that a bug in our software? Um, yeah, I'm not. There's some things in here I thought I'd added that I don't see, so I have to yeah. okay. revisit that. Um, and so then he's run two training courses and he's put a pin on the map where his, um, where his offices are and he's registered um, his training center um, and two course types, beginning QGIS and intermediate QGIS. And then he's regis registered his course conveners. Course convener is just um, the person that runs the training courses or, or it could be uh, the secretary that like, organizes the course, uh, but usually it probably is the person giving the instruction. Um, and you can go in and manage these things, so each one has a form associated with it, so um, you put in all the details of the training center, and you put a dot on the map, and so on, and um, uh, like I said, we don't really use the data from, from the spatial data at the moment yet, but we would like to in the future um, provide like a map of upcoming training courses for QGIS or something like that. Um, and then the same for the course type. So you can create a new course type by just giving it a name, a, how many, uh, a description and how many training hours um, you'll have. And if you want to, you can link it back to your own website's uh, training course page or something like that. Um, Tim? Yes. Since you are in the training centers, um, we do have courses that, or let's say most of the courses we do, we do them on site yeah. at uh, the clients. So what we did for the moment is creating a, a training center called on-site training. Yeah, that's what um, I recommend to people to do because we have the same thing. And uh, where is uh, where is, where is this? Yeah, if we go. Uh, yeah. Yeah. No. We, that's the trick. The, the one thing that I wanted to suggest is uh, because on-site is a bit of a different thing than the other places. Yeah. So we put it in, in into quotes, so it gets at the first place, but wow. that's just an alphabetic ordering thing, because if you make a space, uh, it goes also on the first, but then it looks terrible, on, yeah. well, not terrible, yeah. nitty picking. But maybe we could add this as a default training, or I don't know. Yeah, we could, or we could add a, oh, there's another bug. Um, or, um, or we could add like a, a, a training center type, which is on site or uh, yeah, or something just not, not, not specially linked or something like that. Um, um, yeah, so, okay, and then so Marco has created his different course types and so on, um, and he's got his course convenience. And then you run your training course um, by pressing here, um, and you're just basically now picking from your list of things that you've yeah. before. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, this is on my local, don't worry, Mark, I'm not going to create <laughs> something that you have to go and train for. Um, uh, so, and then you just pick the course type, the convener, and uh, what type of, uh, where, where, the, where the place is going to be. And you choose the date for the start and the end. Um, uh, and then you can add a template file. So the template file is just a... Uh, uh, can be just a PNG, which um, will be put at the background behind your certificate. I'll show you an example of one of Marco's certificates just now, one of Kurt's ones. And it basically just lets you kind of style the certificate with your own organization uh, details. And in the help document that I pointed to before, we've got some uh, example or some details on how you can set that up. So once then, once your course is created, then you, you'll have a new line item here. And then you can go and look at the course or edit the course. So um, we'll see then all the people that uh, Marco has registered for this course. Um, you can add more people to the course by sort of clicking here. It's, it's maybe too many steps. I know in this form already, but you can click here and add attendees uh, or create a new attendee and then 
add them to, into your course. Um, or you can also use a batch uploader. So you can just give a CSV file, which I think is just the first name, last name, and email address of each attendee with commas between them, um, and upload all the attendees in one go. Once you've done that, um, like you would probably do this before the training course, just load all the attendees, and then you run the training course, and then uh, Mark has already issued all these certificates, but um, maybe I'll just put a, this one that, let's see if I can make a new one quickly. Um, so I've just made Joe Blogs there. And then um, Joe Blogs is at the bottom here. You see he doesn't have the little printer icon yet because the certificate is not issued for him. So once, once he completes the course and you're happy that he had the competency, um, like basically passed the course, then you can issue the certificate. Um, it will take off one of your credits and um, that will be printable after that. Um, and then you get like, uh, it generates a certificate. So you can see Mark has uploaded a template with his company branding on it. He puts his company logo in here. He puts the Pugis logo here. And it puts in the details of the course attendee there. Um, and as well as how many hours of instruction, what the dates of the course were, who the trainer was, um, where the training happened. Um, and the most important thing for us was like to actually be able to track the, the training. So um, we give it like every certificate will have a, a verification URL, which is unique to that certificate. Um, and if, if, if you type it in or click on it off the PDF, it will bring you to a page like this, um, which will say, yes, this person really did attend the, the training course. Um, and if you put a non-correct number like this, oopsie, it's supposed to be the, it's because I'm in debug mode, but it will normally give you like a message saying this person didn't, uh, um, attend the training course. So you can kind of like cross reference to see if a person really does have the certificate or not. Um, and um, yeah, that's basically how the system works. Um, and then you just, you go along by just creating new courses, adding attendees to the course, issuing certificates. And uh, when you want to, you just send address the money for it for the, for the course. Um, um, we also have here yeah, where you can put in a certificate number. I think it's going to give me that yellow plate. Okay, so that's what you'll see if uh, if the person didn't actually attend the course based on their certificate number. Um, that's it, Kurt. Did I leave something out or anything I should have mentioned? I think I was pretty thorough. I mean, does anyone have any questions about it? Yes, I have a question about it. Um, when I have students, I mostly have 40 or 50 students at the time. Do I have to click for each stu student or can I have a batch run? So yeah. I say, I upload this entire course and they will run. You create a course and then you take a CSV file with a list of the student names and you can upload the whole list. And mm -hmm. then, uh, you're done. And then you, just, and then you need to... Uh, I think Marco put in a, a request to batch print the certificates, and so we still have some more batches. Um, yeah, exactly. That's the only thing you have to do at the moment. Uh, one by one, it's, uh, it's batch printing. O over here at the moment, you're pressing one each one time for each student. But uh, we will. Anita, who's actually the main author, say hello, Anita, if you're there. And not Anita Grazer, but no, it's actually not. It's not the printing; it's the generating. Yeah, it's thing. the generating. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Anita, I'm sorry, who's, who's in the room here, and she's built most of this. Thank you very much, Anita. Um, she, uh, she, she could just add another button here to just say print all or something like that, and then I don't know. You'll get like a, a fault as well. I have another one. Uh, yeah. Is it possible to add a grade? So what, what kind of grade people have got? I mean, we can add anything. We just need to have a strategy for, okay, is, are we going to do that for required or not required or um, like how will we make it consistent? 
I think uh, it should be easy to add, right? Um, and then we could put it on the certificate. Anita, um, I'm sorry, I hope you're taking notes. <laughs> um, yes, we could do that. Any, any reason, Kurt, why we shouldn't do that? No, I don't. I don't see why not. You know, if if you're, uh, that's I think part of the trust we put into the certifying organization. If if they, you know, say that Joe's student got an A, then that could be on the certificate. I don't see a problem with that at all. Um, yeah. So I think uh, if you, if you have ideas, um, you know, just we have a bug tracker. You can just click on this link here uh, at the top of the page and. Just find your ideas, and we. Uh, I like to think we're fairly responsive. I mean, Anita, it's all Cartosa just doing on our free time. This, but Anita, um, like she usually, I don't know how much she work a week on it. Anita, but maybe like half a day a week or one day a week. She's even working on this platform, so um, she, she will happily build out new stuff if it's well defined what she needs to do. Uh, I have a I have a question. Um, yeah. Um, related with this with this issue of of having a, a mark an A or a nine or whatever, uh, is that some trainings they don't have any kind of formal assessment in the end. So, uh, if we choose to have that kind of of mark, that assumes that there is some kind of assessment. But then, how does that compare with with some other training that doesn't have any kind of formal assessment in the end? So, the simplest thing is to just have. Either you have the certificate or you don't have it. Yeah, it is no, I think very complicated. <laughs> yeah, I no. think it's not that complicated because some courses don't have an assessment and then uh, you just say that the person participated to the course. Mm -hmm. And whereas if you want to make a course with an assessment, then you would say the person passed the course with grade da da da. It's just a matter of, of changing the phrasing on the certificate. I you just I generated it dynamically anyway. Marco is like if you give an A to your student and I give an A to mine, it, are we saying that they're equivalent or um, like, and I think we need to just make it clear that this is just the organization's grade, not you just this grade. And yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's, that's a different issue. Yeah. I, I see this as, as something very important, assuming, and then I, I I just jumped into this debate and probably there were discussions before and I didn't follow them. I apologize for that because maybe what I am saying is not very relevant, but I am assuming the whole point of, of having this kind of certification is to have something that uh, is valuable for the person and for the industry. Okay. Is the goal, if that is the goal, then I think this question of the assessment don't have an answer for that now, but but I, it's tricky. I, I would say that for now we would just have it. You know, either the guy has it or doesn't have it, because otherwise, if, if the marks are not comparable, then what value does it bring for an employer? For example, if I am an employer, how will I assess an 80 that someone got from Natural GIS and an A that someone got from Fauna?lia for example, you know, mm -hmm. I, that's how I see it. Uh, just uh, uh, an addition, uh, it really depends when you've done the training. If you've done uh, QG's training three years ago, you may be not relevant although you have the thing. So notation in itself is not the only thing. If you decide to add notation, uh, you have just to take in account that you need to leverage the difference between when you assess the level of the people. If it was three years ago, it's not relevant that they get an A or a D because uh, they can be uh, now out of bed. So I, 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 I don't agree. I, I don't agree in, in that point of view because my students, they get nine weeks of lecture. They have a curriculum which they work through and it's not about which button they press and but it's about how do I solve this case? Which algorithm do I use? So there will no, it will not be inflated, no, not inflated, that's the word, it will not be devaluated from the years because they have been working with the GIS for in the upcoming years. So, and if a student get a grade in Denmark, they 
I think that 95% of them will apply for a job in Denmark and they will know what the grades are for. It's more if people are working internationally that there might be problems. I think, again, this is kind of why this works as a good starting point because we're simply certifying an organization and, and so when a certificate is issued, it's simply saying that that student passed or passed at a certain level, um, that particular course, those number of hours, that topic in that location. And that's what the certificate is saying. And um, hopefully, you know, all the certifying organizations are teaching good courses and it, it does mean something, but that's kind of where the trust network comes into play with this. Um, it's a little tricky, but I think we had to come up with something that would work internationally across a whole series of different course types. Yeah, I agree. This is a good start, totally. And I think to move forward, we, we can, like I said, it's in, in a way not difficult to add things on the platform. It's just really getting a social <laughs> agreement of how to work. and. Um, if anytime we try to do something that's new, it's going to be difficult because everybody has different ideas. And um, the more simple, I guess, we keep it, the, the better, the less chance we have of it not meeting everybody's requirements. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, are there any ideas for some sort of uh, centralized exam or centralized certification, like a, a standard exam that yeah. would be? by QJS project itself yeah. and, and you can simply apply for that one and you know that if you were trained by one of these organizations, in theory, you, you will be well prepared for that exam, but yeah. you would only have the certificate if you pass that exam. To do that, we yeah, that, to, that was discussed. Yeah. And I know not for now, I'm not suggesting for now because yeah, this yeah. is complicated to implement, I understand that. Go ahead, Kurt. I was going to say, yeah, that, that was discussed and has been bantered around quite a bit. Um, and I think the main difficulty for the time being is that the, the pool of questions would have to be developed and you would probably need, um, you know, a set of questions that would evaluate someone who is wanting to get certified for, you know, Pi QGIS versus someone else who wants to be certified as a cartographer or um, a modeler and um, those would be different sets of questions um, so first of all just kind of coming up with a with a set of questions would have to be done and then those would have to be updated as the software changes um, and then there was always the concern that it wouldn't be too difficult for those questions to get out into the community and for people to be able to figure out what questions someone else was asked last year um, yeah, true. Yeah, it's, it's yeah. difficult. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we went through a lot of these think thought processes, and you know, uh, as Kurt says, you know, there's, there's all these touches. We even tried out some exam uh, or some like certification platform with some open source one. I forget what it was called. Um, so you could go type in a bunch of questions and their answers and so on. Um, but it's a lot of work, and uh, like, who's going to do all that work? And like. To build all those questions yeah. um, for as a volunteer, I, th I think you're going to struggle to find somebody to do it. I maybe can quickly show you some of the work that uh, um, our guys, our team, photos have been doing that we are thinking will take us towards that, which is the, the lesson system that we've been adding to, um, to the platform. Um, so, um, and the idea is that we have like. Uh, uh, a way to, to replace what we were doing. Like Partoza, we were, or it was my old company, we wrote so the original um, QGIS training, not the, you know, the training manual, not the user manual, but the training manual where we had a whole bunch of lessons and so on. But it's very difficult to maintain and, um, and you don't get these uh, testing metrics and so on. So we, we've come up with a new system which we first started doing just as LibreOffice documents, just all in the open GitHub repository. You can go and check out these documents with different modules. Um, and we have a, like a standardized format for these lessons. Um, um, and we've now been moving it onto this platform as well. 
And the idea is that you can come along and author a new lesson, which each lesson should be ideally like less than one hour of activity. Um, and uh, in that lesson, you can tackle one very specific topic, like, I don't know, digitizing a point or whatever, like it should be, the lesson shouldn't try to cover a, a, a large cross section of material. Um, and uh, let's just see, uh, let's see, that's a good example. I'm just taking one at random. So, um, and the, the, the platform gives you a way to author these. Uh, I think I'm not now. Um, uh, so um, you can come along and kind of edit the content that's in there. And uh, it supports Markdown, so it's quite easy to just mark it up. Um, it's translatable. We at the moment just have Indonesian and English support enabled that we can add other translations. Um, and, um, and part of this is some exam or some question system, which we haven't taken into like an exam format yet. But if you, if you scroll down here, we have just some simple questions. And if I hover over them, uh, it should show uh, it should show the correct answer to the open my local copy but um, it, it, you can kind of basically say I want to create a new question um, 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 <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, your question appears in the list uh, uh, and then you can add to that question some potential answers. Uh, <laughs> um, and whether it's correct or not. And then uh, you can kind of like basically quickly construct some, some uh, exam materials. There you can see what, uh, like that is the correct answer. So when I mouse over it, it shows that it's correct. And uh, Etienne Trimail, who's here in the chat room as well, he's done a very nice thing. So you can just download this as a PDF. Um, it just generates a PDF straight out of that document for you. Um, and we, we have uh, some more development work that we're planning, which is to build like a curriculum designer so that um, you can come along and actually uh, go to this front page. Um, you can come to this page and you're gonna have like tick boxes here and you can choose five or six lessons and put them into a curriculum called Introduction to, to QGIS and then make one PDF from those five, five ones that you've chosen so that you know, to address like what Kurt was saying, we've got a cartography course that you're doing, um, and you can just pick out those modules. So um, this is not an official QGIS thing. This is just something Cartos has been doing, but that we would like to share it with you and show you what you're doing and maybe offer it as potential future, more maintainable system than the Sphinx stocks um, and with the, with the training materials, which, I mean, we had the Sphinx session, the QGIS documentation session yesterday, but it's pretty hard to get involved in all that stuff. Like we just want to quickly go and change something or add a new lesson and this stuff. The way that we've got it set up now, it's pretty easy. You can, as long as you can type basically you can, and have a web browser, you can just jump in and create a new lesson. And um, um, you could see that we could have many sections in the future covering all different topics and that we could compose courses from, from these lessons and then take the questions uh, on, those, on, the, on each topic and formulate an exam from it. it. It still won't address all Kurt's concerns that he mentioned about like people just sharing the exam questions beforehand or something, but I think it would be like not a bad start for, um, for a way to manage this. Um, so anyway, um, that's what we're busy with. I'd maybe just give another thank you to Kurt and to Anita Hapsari and to Etienne email and to um, to Alison who, who's uh, all in our company that have been doing this on their, you know, in their volunteer time uh, for the system. Um, well, Kurt's not in our company but he's doing it in his volunteer time too. <laughs> but, um, yeah, so. I just have an, a final question. Yes. Uh, the change, uh, the change log. You you cannot find it on the front page of QGIS.org. Uh, if you have to look for certification, you, you can't find anything. So I I would. Uh, so yeah, we, that. we've been doing it in a kind of gradual way, then, because we didn't want to really advertise it too widely while we're still bootstrapping it. And um, but yeah, we should add it. We should put it on the front page and. Um, 
or just link to it. And um, like, uh, yeah, I don't know, again, could give us some suggestions of where that link should be and uh, add it. And let's just let Etienne fix the bugs that we found now while we're trying to demo today. Um, there is I a mean, for that. <laughs> no, no problem. Is it, is it fixed now, Etienne? Uh, not really, no. <laughs> Just <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll fix it uh, today and get it working properly. Um, okay. Yes, Lena, so yeah, we should add it. And I mean, I would like to see that on the front page, you also have something like that says up, upcoming training courses. And then you can just see which, you know, like near you, where's the training course going to happen. Okay, thank you. But let us, uh, let us, I think, give it a few more months, Lena, before we really make it too broadly um, advertised. And already when we first announced that we had a lot of interest, but I think uh, we want to be sure that everything works well. And, uh, so by all means, go and register. If you're in this call, go and register yourself if you want to and uh, file tickets and tell us what things that work for you. So, Already registered, just need an approval. <laughs> yes, so uh, you can just uh, look in uh, the panel number three, <laughs> man with a hat. <laughs> and, uh, and yeah, Lena, I was going to approve you this morning, but I got an error, so okay. you'll be approved shortly. <laughs> it might be symptomatic. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Now, there's some, there, we, we know what the issue is, we will go and fix it, and then we'll pop your note when it's sorted out. Any other comments or questions? Good. Thanks for joining and all your inputs and like just file tickets or start the conversation on users developer, I guess, if you if you want to discuss things more. Okay. Uh, I'm trying to find the stop button. I think my Zoom is going a bit crazy. I can't stop. Ah. All right. I'm. I'm going to stick around for a few minutes here until the end. I'm going to stick around for a few minutes here. Marco, your, your mic has got a bad echo. Marco, okay, your, your mic has got a bad echo. Uh, it's, it's not mine. I have um, headphones on. Let's see. It's gone now. You mute. Try to talk. Hello, hello. Ah, it's fixed itself. Magic. And the chat is under 